Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Now that we have discussed the underpinning skills of creating if conditional statements, let's go ahead now and apply this to a Django project. There are many occasions where you will probably require an if statement to perform or create some sort of logical flow within your application. A good example of where an if statement is required is when we're building a Django form from a model. In the next few tutorials, we'll go ahead and explore how to build a Django form from an existing model. We'll learn how to render a Django form onto a template, and then we'll discuss saving the data from the form to the database. And that's where we need to start to think about the flow of our application and to build our if statements. If you haven't been following this course up to this point, you can download a copy of this code that we generate in this section of the course. If you go to this section's resource folder, you'll be able to find a download, and that is the, the project in which you can have inspect and follow along these tutorials where we go ahead now and build a Django form and save that data to our existing database. So if you navigate to new app models, we have already created our model, our table, so we don't need to worry about that. And what we can do here in Django is that we can utilize this information here to build our form. Because if we wanted to build a form which allows users to enter new information into this customer table here, then we need to know, well, that form needs to have three fields. Now, because we've already described these fields here, we can utilize this information that's been described in this model here to actually build our form automatically. Okay, so in our new app, let's go ahead now and create a new file here. We're gonna call that forms.py. So here we're going to describe and essentially create our form or the instructions for building a form. Now there are definitely different ways of creating forms in Django. We can create some manual forms, of course we could, but here we have a model and generally our form needs to capture information which relates to one of our tables. And our tables, like we've already seen, they're already described here. Everything is described, the type of data that should be stored and the name of that field. So here in Django, we can import a resource here from form, so from Django forms. Let's go and import, import model form. So we're going to use the model to automatically generate a form. So we are going to need the model. So let's bring that in models. Uh, let's go ahead and import the model, which is called customer. So we bring that resource in. So we now have that resource and we can utilize that to generate a new form. So we create a new class. We call this uh, customer form. You can call it whatever you like. I'm going to call it customer form. Clearly identifies what this is for. I'm going to extend from model form, bring all these tools in so I can start to utilize my, for, my model here to build a form. So I need to bring in something called class uh, meta and I need to specify two things here. First of all, the model. And then secondly, I need to specify the field. So what I'm doing here is I'm connecting a form to my model. My model has all the instructions that the form needs to automatically generate all the different inputs. There's gonna be three inputs in this new form that we're building because there are three fields in this database table. And then it also describes the data types. So, 
when we actually allow users to enter data into the form, we can also have Django automatically validate that data. We know that the first input in our form is a text input. The second is an integer. So it's only expecting numbers. So all this information can be utilized here to build our form automatically. So here we can specify the difference. Notice that it is a, a list. So we're familiar with that. So we're building a list here of all of the, the fields that we have in our table. Now we don't need to specify them all. And there are lots of different options here. There are some forms or some fields that we may not want to include. So we simply just don't include them here. We can just um, tell Django to use them all. But here we've just specified them. So those are all the instructions that Django is going to need to build our form automatically. Right. So now we have our form. Let's close that. Let's go back into our views. Right. So we want to add now a new page where we can add more information. So if you remember the format previously, first of all, we need to build a URL and then we need to build a view and then we need to build potentially a template. If you remember this diagram we generated a few sections ago in the course here. So in order for us to allow users to access a new URL or a new web page, we're going to need to build a URL, attach that to a view, and then potentially bring any database resources in if that's needed. And in addition to that, if it requires a template, we're also going to need to build a new template. So let's start with building a new view, a, a new URL, sorry. So we need a comma at the end here. Let's just go ahead and we'll just copy this. There we go. And we're going to need a new view for this. So let's call this add new. So the view is going to be called add new. The new path is going to be add new, as in add new customer. Okay, so we've created a new URL now and we've attached it to a view. Now that view doesn't exist yet. So let's go ahead in our views and let's go ahead and build this view. So def new add new. Okay, we're taking request and then I add this pass keyword here. This is just a keyword, a temporary way of ensuring that our code doesn't break. If we, for example, were to run our code now, everything will work okay. It just tells um, Python, um, this is just a temporary piece of code. We're going to change that later. Okay, so we're going to want to render something out here. So before we do that, let's just go ahead and we're just going to add, notice I'm just copying and pasting, it's a lot quicker than typing potentially. So we're just going to return now we are going to need to return a new template. So let's call this add new. Okay. So now what we should have is a URL that's ready to pass on the user to the new view. Um, if they should type in add new into the URL after the home page. So that should take them to this view. Now we created this new page here. So let's go into our templates and add a new template. Okay. And then I'm just going to copy and paste the code from index. I'll put that onto the new add new template. I'll just remove all this stuff in the middle here. And there we go. So this is the add new customer page. So let me just put that in a heading. Why not? And see if we can now view that on our website. So let's go into Python 3, manage.py run server. So if we typed everything correctly, then this should work okay. So I've opened up the server, I've gone to the web page, the home page, and we do have an error here. And that is because of some changes that we made in the previous tutorial. So if you go into index, you can see here that we were playing around and discussing for loops. So let's just change that back to val. Okay, and then we refresh again and our home page should be now displaying all the data that's currently in our database. Okay, so now if I navigate to new uh, and add new, you can now see we're navigated to our new page, add new customer. So at this point, we have now created a new form or described a new form. 
that was in our form file here. We've described the model and the fields that we want to utilize when handling our form or when generating our form. We've created a new URL, remember the, the comma, and then we've also then generated a new view and we've tested that view and that page is now working. We've added the template, so we've added a create a new template here. So now we're ready to take the information regarding our form and place it onto our template. Let's prepare first by going over to views here. So we need to import the form. So let's go ahead and do that. So from dot forms, let's import our new form, which is the customer, I think it was called the cus customer form. It was a customer form, yep. Uh, so forms, yep. So from custom dot forms, import customer form. Okay, so now we have the customer form resource. We now need to output that form to the template. 